Based on a technology from Autodesk Toxic, 3ds Max Design 2011 now includes 3ds Max Composite, a fully featured, high-performance, HDR-capable compositor. We'll start in 3ds Max Design and render a frame using the new OpenEXR format that will allow us to store or render elements to EXR layers. First, I have set this lobby scene which includes an animated camera with some render elements. Under the Render Element tab in my Render Setup window, I can see the list including Z-Depth, Certain Matte, Reflection, Lighting and Shadow Pass. You can add as many render elements as you need. Then, under the Common tab, I will save this frame into an OpenEXR format and click the Setup button. This will open the OpenEXR configuration window where I can set the format, type and global option of my OpenEXR, but most importantly, I can add any render element to my OpenEXR. I will do so by clicking on the Add button and either choosing only the render element needed or I can select them all. I also have options to add GBuffer channel if needed. Then I click OK and save this image. Once rendered, all the render elements that I have included will now be part of my OpenEXR as layers. Obviously, I can choose to do this on a single frame or an animation. This project was set with an animated camera. Let's render this image to help us understand. Because the display render element option is on, once the render is completed, 3ds Max Design will display all the render elements. But instead of saving them as multiple files, they will all be included within a single OpenEXR file. Next, we'll load this animation that I have previously rendered using the same OpenEXR settings in 3ds Max Composite and look at how I can help you bring your project to the next level while giving you iteration capabilities. For this example, I will load the 150 frames I have previously rendered using the same OpenEXR setting I just showed you. Hitting play will show me the complete animation. With my sequence selected, I can navigate to the option tab and you will see that I have access to all the render element layer within the same sequence. I can choose between the diffuse layer, the mats I have created and even the Z-depth. To connect my frame to the output node, I simply have to drag the output from my sequence node to the output node. I have loaded here a complete composition I have created using the same OpenEXR. I also separated some of the lights by rendering paths allowing me to adjust them and create different variation of my rendering. 3ds Max Composite allow you to make certain decisions within the compositing environment without having to re-render the entire sequence. Now that I have shown you the render element used, let's see what kind of change we can make. We'll change the player output to show the composition output so we can see the final result instead of each tool's output. First, we'll have a look at the light passes. Because I have rendered separately the daylight, the lobby lights and the feature wall lights, I can decide on the intensity of these lights once in 3ds Max Composite. Right now, I only have the lobby lights turned on. While selecting the Blend and Comp tool, I can decide how much of the feature wall light I want to bring back in, same way that I would do if I had a dimmer on my lights. I can also do the same with the daylight coming in the back window. While using my chair mat, I can do color changes on the red fabric of the chair and look at different color options. You can do color changes on the entire image or select one of the RGB channel forcing the mats to be used as mask and perform the color changes on the chair fabric. I can also do the same color adjustment with any mat I have set for my scene and I do have one for the floor. I will saturate the floor a little bit more to get more color variation on my stone tiles. While clicking the middle mouse button, the gate UI will appear giving me access to different elements of the UI. If I swipe over to the right, I'll have access to the tools view where I can pick which compositing tool to work with. 3ds Max Composite have multiple tools including tracking, camera mapping, 
raster and vector paint, spline base warping, motion blur, depth of field, and tools to help support stereoscopic productions. The possibilities are multiple, and all this without having to re-render your sequence and run some rendering tests to fine-tune the colors. Here, I will use the Z-Depth layer from my beauty render and bring in a small blurriness on the back of my scene, adding realism and helping the viewer concentrate on the lobby area of this image. Same for the self-illuminated layer. I can decide to blur it a bit to bring some softness to the self-illuminated element or even change its colors. As I am building up the complexity of my schematic, I keep using different layers of my OpenEXR, allowing me to interchange between layers as I need. 3ds Max Composite is a high-performance compositor that you will definitely find advantage to include in your workflow.